So moving forward, let's just review one more time and compare the following two approaches to specifying uh, the location of a SAS data set. In the first example, number one, we used a proc contents and we used direct referencing uh, where the full file path, the text in red font, um, was specified to the procedure, followed by the name of the actual SAS dataset, which is specified in yellow. In the second example, instead of putting in, uh, typing in the full file path, we simply gave the library reference, or the libref, which we had named epic in a libname statement previously. Again, that part is in red. And then the actual SAS dataset is in yellow, and the two parts of the data set name using this approach, the libref and the actual SAS data set name are separated by a period and there's no SAS file extension uh, required. And we'll go over this again uh, in a different setting as a reminder as we move forward in this lesson. So this brings us to the notion of SAS data libraries because uh, the obvious question is uh, what exactly is, is EPIC and what is the libname statement doing? So SAS data libraries simply refer to locations or in other words folders on your computer where SAS files, uh, many different SAS file types, but most importantly actual SAS data sets are stored. We use a libname statement to create SAS data libraries. We also use the libname statement to assign a libref to the actual data library location. In other words, the libref uh, is used to let SAS know where to go on the computer to find a particular data library. And the libref that you use is the actual name of the data library. And then finally, this is just a reminder of what that syntax looks like. You have a libname statement followed by some libref that you specify. Again, we called this epic. You could name it anything you like, but it would not be, you wouldn't use the actual word libref. Uh, you should use something that's meaningful to you. And then you specify the file path in quotation marks, and you end with a semicolon, and there's no run command required with the libname statement. So again, in our example, we created a SAS data library named EPIC, and we did that using the libname statement, as shown uh, below here. We have the libname statement, followed by the word EPIC, followed by the actual file path in quotation marks. And examples of that are provided in the, in the SAS code or, or previous slides in this lesson. It's possible to create multiple SAS data libraries. You would simply use a separate libref uh, for each data library, and that would be done within the context of a separate libname statement. There are some examples provided in the editor file, and you can then view your data libraries uh, using the Explorer window. Now we'll jump back over to SAS and show a few examples of how that would work in the editor file. Now here are three libname statements in uh, rows 31 through 33 in my editor file. The first libname statement is going to create a SAS data library named mylib1 because I used mylib1 as the libref. And the location of that data library is specified here in quotation marks. So it's in the documents folder, then uh, French SPH, SAS 2012, data, etc. You use a close quote um, and semicolon. In the next line, I'm creating a separate SAS data library and I'm naming it Haynes, uh, short for N Haynes, and that points to a different location on my computer. And then in the next line, there's yet another libname statement creating yet another SAS data library. This time, the data library is named Haynes99, and again, it points to a different location on my computer. And if I simply highlight 
those three statements and submit them. We can go to the log file and make sure they were submitted correctly. And in each instance, it says um, uh, that the data libraries were su uh, successfully as assigned. Then after you've created those data libraries, as we've talked about before, you can go forward and use the new uh, librefs that you created, pointing to the data libraries, to run various procedures on different data sets. For example, here I'll run a proc contents on a data set named Anthro, which is located in the Haynes data library. That means SAS is going to go to this location specified in row 32 in my editor file, and it will then find a SAS data set named Anthro, and it will run the prompt, prop, uh, excuse me, contents procedure on that data set. We highlighted it and submitted that code, and here's the output. Now when you're using this type of uh, referencing to get to the SAS data set using librefs, uh, the data set name is specified here, and it doesn't give you the location in this, in this particular place. It just tells you the data library and the name of the SAS data set. The actual location of the file is specified down below. So if you wanted to see where that was located on your data set, it gives you the full location and data set name here. And we could then move forward and run a proc contents on another data set. In this example, I'll look at the BPX data set, which is located in the Haynes 99 data library. A completely different SAS data set located in a different location on my computer, and I'm asking SAS to run the contents procedure on it. So this is a data set that holds uh, blood pressure information from one of the continuous cross-sections of NHANES. And you could run proc prints, any procedure you like, specifying the names and locations of the SAS data sets on which you want to run those procedures. So here I wanted to show a quick example uh, of a libname statement uh, when a problem can arise. Frequently you put data on a flash drive, which is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and you simply create a data library pointing to your flash drive and the folder on the flash drive in the same way you would create a, a data library as de described above for folders on your computer. The difference here is that I don't actually have a flash drive at attached to my computer at the moment. So when that happens, SAS is going to have trouble assigning the data library because it won't see that particular uh, directory as a real or existing directory in your operating environment. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'll highlight that and submit it. And we get a note and it says the library epic2 does not exist. And again, the problem is simply that I don't actually have an X drive mapped on my computer at the moment because I don't have a flash drive in. This type of error will come up anytime there's a, an error in the file path that you specify. It could be because the uh, folder or the actual drive simply doesn't exist. That happens if you're using network drives and the network is down, or if you're using a flash drive and you don't have it plugged in. This can also happen quite frequently if you have a small typo in the file path for a folder that actually exists on your computer. Again, I, I really strongly recommend that to make sure you don't have typos of that nature that you use the techniques we talked about in previous lessons to find your file paths. Uh, if you navigate to them using my computer and you simply copy paste the file path out of the address bar as we went over previously, that will minimize the potential for errors and small typos in, in spelling out file paths. And you can also use uh, the Explorer window, which is indicated here, to look at what data libraries exist in your current working session. And you would click on 
the libraries icon. Let's go back over to SAS. As you see, I'm just clicking on the Explorer tab down here, lower left-hand side of, of the window. And then you can come up and double-click on the Libraries icon. This will show you a list of all data libraries for this working session. Now, SAS includes a number of uh, data libraries by default. You don't have to do anything to bring those data libraries into existence. SAS user is uh, one to be aware of, and the work data library is another one to be aware of. And we'll talk explicitly about the work data library in just a few minutes. In addition to that, you can see there's a data library called uh, EPIC2, EPIC, Haynes99, Haynes, uh, etc. And these data libraries, these four data libraries, are all data libraries that we uh, attempted to create or created successfully using the libname statement. So EPIC2 uh, was not successfully created. There is an icon for it, but if you try and open it, it just says that it doesn't exist. So we say OK. But if we wanted to look in the EPIC data library, for example, this shows all SAS data sets included in the EPIC data library. This is really no different than going to the EPIC folder on your computer, um, not the actual EPIC folder, but the folder to which the EPIC uh, libref points, and looking in that folder to see what SAS data sets uh, are in there. So let's just do that to try and demonstrate the principle. The, the libref epic over here in line 11 in the editor window points to this folder location on my computer. If I were to open that folder on my computer, This shows the contents, the complete contents of this folder on my computer. Again, this is the uh, directory on my computer, the folder on my computer uh, that I assigned as the EPIC data library using the libname statement. And you can see there are a lot of SAS data sets. For example, all WT and anthro, BMX underscore C, and all of those data sets appear in the Explorer window. Uh, within the context of SAS. So note that only SAS datasets appear when you're looking in a SAS data library through the SAS interface. Whereas I can have many different file types in this folder in my actual computer, uh, both SAS and non-SAS uh, files. And as you're navigating through the Explorer window and data libraries, if you just use this up one level button, that would bring you up back to the level showing different libraries, and you could jump into a different library if you want to see which SAS data sets were available to you in different libraries. I'll bring that back to the results tab.